There's a war going on in the streets and in the trenches. It's the war between atheists on one side and religious people on the other. The atheists are in the trenches, ready to launch their missiles of ridicule. And the religious people are up in the moral high ground, armed to the teeth of bazookas. And they're all doing a lot of shouting about something called God. So what is God and does it exist? Well, I've got five minutes to solve this problem. <laughs> so the problem is, everyone has a slightly different idea of what God is and how it relates to the physical world. If my idea of God is a guy in a cloud, then you'd say, Matt, don't be ridiculous. But that doesn't disprove God in general, obviously. Personally, I've always had a particular attachment to the so-called God of the physicists. When you start pushing at the boundaries of science, you start asking questions like, what is the universe? Why are there laws of physics at all? Is there something fundamental, perhaps incomprehensible to human understanding, um, that explains existence and meaning? And uh, this, I think it's natural to call that a God. Richard Dawkins talks about his deep reverence and wonder at the mysteries of the universe. And these are the sort of feelings that I'd associate with that sort of God. Dawkins calls himself a spiritual atheist. Um, I call myself mostly a pantheist. But I think more or less we're talking about the same thing. Now, of course, most people when they talk about God, they'd be talking about a more personal God. And I do think that a personal God who dabbles in human affairs is rather hard to justify. I could make plenty of arguments against it. But I think that would be missing the point of why people believe in God. And that is hope. People want hope in a benevolent universe that will listen to their hopes and dreams. People want a simple set of principles to base their decisions on. People want to be plugged into a community that will affirm their worldview. And an atheist would say, why believe in something for which no good evidence exists? But a religious person can continue, to, uh, can continue to hope in a personal God as long as there's no proof to the contrary. And both of these approaches are valid in moderation. For instance, I don't think there's any good scientific arguments for free will, but I still hope that there's free will because the alternative is going crazy. <laughs> so why do religions become so extreme and do evil things even by their own standards? Well, I think the first thing is that they confuse these notions of hope, belief and fact. It's a lot easier to create a religion based on shared belief than it is based on shared hope. And from belief it's only a small step towards assumed fact. The, the other thing to realise is that religions are fighting for their own survival in a world of competitive ideology. And the ones that have made it to the top, the ones that you see at the top, are, the, are there because they've become the most successful at spreading their ideology, which typically involves a fair bit of Machiavellianism. <laughs> now, every ideology at some point comes to a fork in the road. Either you can try and tell the truth in all its complexity, or you can simplify it, be dogmatic, emotional, polarising, crusade against evil, Make it the duty of every one of your followers to spread the message. And, uh, and complex truths are just hard to sell. People prefer simple messages. Stop Coney. Save the whales. If you look at what's happening in Christianity, we see that liberal churches are struggling with falling attendance numbers, while evangelical churches are thriving. Simple messages sell. Well, so what about atheism? Well, atheists also have a choice here. Either you can be a liberal atheist and accept that there's positives and negatives to religion and what it gives people, or you can be an evangelical atheist and oppose, attack, ridicule God and religion in all its forms. And there's certainly something to be said for evangelical atheism. There's something to be said for evangelical atheism when it comes to competing with religions on their own turf. But you have to accept that in doing this, you're simplifying the message, you're using the tools of religion and compromising on some of the truth. So personally, I think, rather than teaching another simplistic ideology, what we should be doing is trying to teach broad-mindedness and understanding. 
trying to teach people to long for the truth in all its messiness and complexity, to long to understand the endless mysteries of the universe. Because the universe is far more amazing than anything that can be contained in religious books or atheist manifestos. Thank you.